Well, hello there, Earthlings, and welcome to The Matrix. Let's talk about some sci-fi. So the topic of the day is sci-fi books, and admittedly I have not read a lot of sci-fi yet. Uh, just a few standalones here and there, mostly older ones. I did read a couple of the Star Wars books when I was younger, uh, but aside from that, I haven't read a whole lot in the genre. I do want to get more into it. So like I previously made a video for the um, top 10 uh, fantasy series I want to read, uh, here is a video of the top 13 books and or series that I want to read uh, in the sci-fi genre. And the reason why it's 13 is because there are a few where the genre is a bit iffy. Um, so they might be considered sci-fi or maybe horror or something else entirely. Um, but seeing as I haven't read them yet, I'm not sure what uh, genre they fall into the best. So I'm going to include them anyways. Uh, there's going to be a mix of standalones and series. Um, some new, some old. Uh, there's not going to be any kind of order to this at all, as usual. So without further ado, let us dive in. Alright, so the first one I'm going to list is one that I recently bought. Uh, the first book of... It's uh, a weird sentence. I recently bought the first book in the series for this... Um, and that is Red Rising. Uh, this is by Pierce Brown. Same modern sci-fi series uh, about a civilization that's kind of divided by colors. I think it's kind of um, some kind of an uprising or something. Uh, it's pretty popular these days among certain circles. I mean, just look at this cover. Isn't that cool? I believe I believe this series has three. Uh, and then like there's a sequel series that has two or three in it. I haven't paid that much attention because uh, I haven't started it yet, but I believe the ne the newest one is coming this year, so I'm not sure I'll be able to uh, catch up in time to read that on release or not. Uh, I, would, I would guess no, but uh, you know, it could happen. You never know. Uh, the next one is probably one of the most famous and most legendary science fiction books in Mankind. Uh, that is Dune by Frank Herbert. I don't have this one, uh, but I want to buy that on the, that one hardcover version that everyone has with the, the blue edges and everything. It looks really nice. I do want to read this. I haven't seen any of the movies or anything yet, so I don't really know exactly what it's about. I know it's about a Kind of a desert planet or something. A space desert or something, I don't know. I think there's a giant worm, maybe. So we'll see. Uh, but I want to get to that. At least the first book in the series. I'm not sure if I will continue with the rest in the Dune series or not. I guess it all kind of depends on how much I like the first one. Let's jump back in time for the next one. This is going to be the Barsoom series by Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is a kind of a classic sci-fi adventure pulp series um, from the early 1900s, also known as the John Carter books, which you know they made a movie uh, for around a decade ago, but it completely flopped. Uh, I've never seen it. Uh, it sounded kind of weird to me. Uh, there's a guy in space called John Carter. I guess he's from Earth. He gets transported to Mars, so that makes more sense. Sega, can I help you? Say hello, Sega. Yeah. So I guess this guy from Earth gets transplanted to Mars, then he starts fighting space things, I guess. I don't know. But I've heard it's a really fun story. There's, I'm not sure how many books in the series. I think they're all pretty short as well, so that'd be nice. I've also heard that the writing in this one is very easy to comprehend uh, for, a, for an older book. Sometimes the, it's kind of a toss-up if you get a kind of a thicker, dense book or kind of an easier one when it comes to older books, so that'd be nice to have something very palatable. So the next one on my list is Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. This is one of the more uh, well-known cyberpunk novels. I think it involves something about a computer reality, so I'm envisioning something like The Matrix, or Rare Player One, or Tron, or Sword Art Online, or any of those other things. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. 
I am really interested in the aesthetics of cyberpunk, so I want to see how I take to the books in that genre. The next one up is A Canical for Leibowitz. This is a post-apocalyptic novel by Walter Miller Jr. Uh, it's set in the post-apocalypse, like I said. It kind of focuses on the rebuilding of the of society or of the civilization. Uh, I've heard good things about this one. It's not one that's talked about a lot. Um, but when it is talked about, it's very well regarded, I think. Another post-apocalyptic novel is The Passage by Justin Cronin. Uh, this is one of those where the, uh, like I said, the genre is kind of iffy. So I'm not sure if this is uh, more considered sci-fi or horror. Um, but either way, it, I think it fits uh, the category. And also, this is one that I do own as well. I recently bought uh, the first book in the series, at least. Um, I think there are three books in the, in the series as a whole. Uh, so like I said, it's about the post-apocalypse. I think there are some vampire zombie uh, creatures and maybe some other things uh, going on. So looking forward to getting to that. Another series I want to get into is the Hyperion Cantos by Dan Simmons. I have the first book, uh, Hyperion, uh, on digital. I do want to get in Dan, into Dan Simmons uh, just in general, so I could start with this one if I want to. Then there are some other books in the series after the first one, which are kind of a mixed bag from what I hear. But as for Hyperion itself, uh, it's kind of like the Canterbury Tales, and then it's a series of stories being swapped by characters and some kind of a futuristic uh, space landscape or something. We're going to travel back in time for the next one. This is going to be from one of the grandfathers of the science fiction genre. This is Robert Heinlein. This is Stranger in a Strange Land. Or really, um, pretty much any of his work. I know that Moon of the Harsh Mistress is also one I want to get to. Um, but just in general, I'd say this is probably the place I'd start. Uh, I have not read any of his work yet, obviously. Um, so similar to John Carter, of Mars, I think this one is kind of the opposite, where a person from Mars goes to Earth and then he thinks about things. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. It's one of the more older sci-fi books on the list, so it's probably more of a intellectual uh, exercise more than an action story, would be my guess. But that's okay, too. While we're back in the past, might as well go to another of the pillars of sci-fi. This is Arthur C. Clarke. This is an author that I have read uh, of before. I have read two of his stories. I've liked them fairly well. I read 2001 Space Odyssey, a Space Odyssey in uh, junior high. I really enjoyed it. I read uh, the other one, uh, Childhood's End. I read that last year. Uh, so this one kind of appeals to me the most uh, of his other work. It takes place in like a, the, the uh, distant future and like kind of a a domed civilization. Not sure if that's Earth or a different planet. And I guess there are like a supercomputer that controls everything too. It sounds bonkers entirely, so I'm looking, really looking forward to getting into that at some point. We're going to skip forward in time again and go to a more modern author. This is Blake Crouch. This is basically my Blake Crouch slot. Um, the ones I'm mainly looking for are Recursion and Dark Matter, those are, those are the ones that seem to be the most popular from him. Um, as for which one I'll read first, I haven't decided yet. Um, I could go either way, or maybe one of his older works too, who knows. Uh, I know he's very popular these days, compared a lot to Michael Crichton. Uh, a lot of the same ideas, kind of the techno thriller genre. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting into who into his work to see what uh, all the hubbub is about with uh, Blake Crouch. And speaking of Michael Crichton, let's go to him next. Uh, the one I have on my list is State of Fear, um, but I have not read anything from Michael Crichton before, so I know there's probably some more obvious picks like Jurassic Park that I could start with. But anyways, I saw the synopsis, the, uh, synopsis for this book one time, State of Fear, and it sounded very interesting to me, uh, so I kind of wanted to read this one first. Uh, it's about some eco-terrorists who plot some mass murders to um, kind of further their agenda about global warming. 
Uh, so that sounds very interesting to me, more so than some of the other things that I've uh, seen from him. Uh, but we'll see if if you have read this one and you don't think it's a good way to start reading his work, then let me know and let me know uh, which one I should start with. I should start with and uh, try to sell me on that one instead. Two more to go. Uh, the next one is another modern uh, series. Uh, and that is the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio. I have the first two books um, of this series that I that I bought recently. Uh, and I know there's five in the series right now, and I believe the sixth one is coming this year, or maybe next year. Uh, I'm not sure quite exactly. Uh, but this is why I'm really really looking forward to getting into. Uh, like I said, it's modern sci-fi, um, sci-fi fantasy maybe. I know this story is about uh, the character whose name I'm blanking on, uh, but he does something big, uh, destroys the world or something, I don't remember. And then he, the whole story is just him relaying, up, uh, relaying the uh, story of how he did that, I guess. So it sounds good. Uh, I want to get into it. And I know I said it before, but the covers, um, at least the US covers for this series are awesome. Uh, some of my favorites that I've come across so far. Really looking forward to getting into those. And then finally, we're gonna go back in time again uh, for yet another of the grandfathers of sci-fi. This is Isaac Asimov. I've known about Asimov ever since I was in grade school. And I was always looking at the uh, robots and aliens and monsters section of the uh, school library whenever we went in there. I, I heard about Isaac Asimov who had written sci-fi books earlier in the century. Uh, he's considered one of the greatest sci-fi writers of all time. But yet I have not read anything from him yet and I have not seen any of the adaptations of his books yet either so I'm not sure what I've been doing. So the book I chose for him is iRobot. I think it's probably the best way to start um, rather than starting with Foundation. Uh, so I just decided to go with iRobot for this one, which I'll probably start with. Um, I'm not sure what it's about exactly. I never bothered to look up a synopsis for it. I know it's about robots and artificial intelligence and you know all the things that come with that. So so that, that's, pretty, that's probably where I'll start with Asimov, unless uh, I'm told otherwise. I think that's probably the best way to go. So there we go, that is my list of 13, uh, maybe sci-fi, maybe fantasy, maybe horror books and or series that I wanna read. I'm not sure which ones I will be reading first. I do wanna get into some more of the modern ones uh, before I get dig back into, um, you know, the Asimovs and the Arthur C. Clarks again, uh, just to get a little more balance. Uh, so I'm thinking either Hyperion or Sun Eater or Dune or Red Rising. I'm not sure which one I'll do first though, so if you have any opinions on that, feel free to let me know down below. And just, there is a, just as a reminder, in the description below, you will find uh, links to my Goodreads, you can add me, Instagram, you can follow me, or to my merch stores, you can buy a t-shirt if you feel so inclined. But anyways, that's all I've been programmed to say. So, thank you for watching, and as always, never give up, never surrender.